in order to access this week's assignment, you're going to go to modules, scroll down to week three, and you'll see targeting success using data. On this page, I gave you a series of notes and charts. And when you scroll all the way down, you will see a link right here. This is the link that you're going to click so it could open up your Google Sheets. What you want to do first is make a copy of the document. The document is right protected, so that way 60 of you guys are not editing the same document and turning in the same thing. So what I did is I made it so it's only view only. So what you do is you go to File, Make a Copy, and you'll see that you can go ahead and rename it. So if I were you, I would go ahead and get rid of Copy Of and just write your name. So I'll write my own. And I'll add a space and a hyphen. And then you can just go ahead and tell um, Google where you want to save your document. So for me, it's under my Introduction and Engineering Design folder. Some of you guys just kind of throw it randomly. Um, that is totally up to you. Once you do that, it's going to, you're going to hit OK. And it's going to open up a brand new window. Let's analyze the document before we get started. Each question, which there's five of, has a series of rows and columns. You'll see that we have a column for trials, which is the number of times that the students um, sampled their beanbag launcher. There is a column for the X coordinates and the Y coordinates. There's also a column here for distance measured. So this is what the students did to when they got the tape measure and they measured from the origin, which is zero, zero, and measured to the center of the beanbag. These, this empty row right here is what you guys are going to fill in. And then down below here, you guys are going to go ahead and find the average of all of these coordinates. And once you have all of those filled out, you'll see that they automatically populate in these yellow cells. They will also automatically populate at the very bottom where it says teacher use only. Please do not edit this. Um, that is for my grading purposes only. And if you change that, you, you could potentially actually make a big mistake. Um, and lastly, you'll see paste chart here. I will go over that soon and how to go about generating a chart so you can paste it on there. Before I begin, it's important that you guys understand how cells work. If I click on negative 19, you'll see that there is a negative 19 number attached to it, but behind the scenes, it's actually a variable. So in this case, the variable is B. You'll see how this is shaded a little, a little darker, three. So actually, if I went over here and I said equals capital B three, you'll see that it automatically highlighted this cell here. And if I click enter, that it'll actually copy over what the number is. So if I change this to 20, for example, you'll see that it automatically gets changed up to here. So I'm going to go ahead and undo. I'll just delete what's in here. And note that you're going to need to know the variables tied to these cells so you can reference them when you guys are working with the formulas. So during class, I actually went through with you guys and showed you how to manually calculate the distance between the origin to the point. Now we need to go ahead and translate that over. Um, in order for that to happen, we have to actually take this formula right here and replace it with this formula right here, right? Because we can't just take the formula that's written by hand and it just automatically transfer it over to Google Sheets. We actually have to write it in the way that Google Sheets can interpret it. So what we're going to do is since we are going to be using these numbers to calculate the distance to the origin, we're going to have to actually type that formula in here. So I'm going to say equals SQRT. I'm going to open up parentheses twice. Now I'm going to reference cell B3. And I'm going to subtract that by our origin, which is zero. And then I'm going to hit shift six, and you'll see that it gives us that little arrow that's pointing up. I'm going to put number two. What that does is it's going to square it. I'm going to say plus open parenthesis. At this time, I'm going to reference negative seven, which is C3 minus the origin, 
once again, which is zero. And then shift six, two, and then close the parenthesis. What I just wrote here is the equivalent of that handwritten formula, but written in the way that Google Sheets can interpret it. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter, and you'll see that it automatically calculated 20.2. Now this number is usually gonna be smaller than the number here. And the reason is, is because whenever you throw a bean bag, the bean bag doesn't just stop, right? Sometimes it bounces, sometimes it slides. This is just a theoretical number that it should have landed in, given these coordinates, right? Now, you shouldn't have to repeat this process over and over and over 24 more times. Google Sheets is actually much more intuitive than that. You'll see that whenever you click on a cell, that it outlines it blue. But along with that, you'll see this little blue dot. If you click and hold and you drag it down and let go, you'll notice that it automatically spit all these numbers out. And actually, we probably want to do that all the way to the very bottom right here. And the reason we want to go to the very bottom is because what Google Sheet does is automatically assume whatever formula you have here, you want to use for every cell beneath it. And so if I click on this cell right here, you'll see that it followed a pattern. Instead of B3 and C3, instead you'll see that it uses B4 which is negative 12, and C4, which is negative three in the calculations, making your life a lot easier. So now that you've figured out how to apply that formula over here, we need to go ahead and fill out these cells. Now these cells are specifically reserved for you to calculate the average or the mean, right? And by the average, I'm talking about all of these different trials right here. We took 25 samples, right? And each sample is a little bit different. On a normal case scenario, um, in order to find the average, you're going to add up your total, all these numbers up, and then divide them by the number of numbers that there are. So in this case, once you add up all of these, you're going to divide it by 25. Now you can do that manually, or you can just use the, the nice tools that Google gives you. So what we're going to do is we're going to highlight from negative 19, and we're going to go all the way to 9. And then you'll see right here, this weird letter E here actually means sigma. We we'll use that in algebra two. If you scroll down, you'll see average. And what that'll do is you'll see that it automatically put in a formula for you. Equals, average, all capitalized. And it's gonna take the numbers from B3, which is all the way from the very top, number negative 19, all the way to B27, and it's gonna add all of those and divide it by the number of cells there are. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter, and you'll see that it came up with a negative 1.44, and we're gonna do the same thing for the Y coordinates. Highlight everything from negative seven all the way up to negative 10. Once again, hitting the sigma here and clicking on average. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and hit enter. And there you go you will see that it automatically put in negative 1.6. You will also see that these boxes were automatically filled up. It took this number, copied it over, this number, copied that over here, and it took this number here and copied that over here. Now, these numbers are also copied down below. Once again, for my purposes only, you'll see negative 1.4, negative 1.16, and 1.8 you are going to repeat this process for questions two, three, four, and five. Now that you guys have completed all the cells, now it's time to go ahead and make a chart. Now you're gonna include two more cells than you normally do. Instead of starting at negative 19 and negative seven, we're actually gonna start by clicking and holding where it says X coordinate, moving over to where it says Y, and then scrolling all the way down to where you get to cell um, 27 or where it stops at 25 right here. Once you've done that, you're gonna to go to insert, chart, and you'll see that by default, it wants to throw this line chart. That's not what we want. Instead, you're gonna click on here and you're gonna click on the one that says Y coordinate versus X coordinate. 
If it does not show up under suggested, you might have to scroll down a bit to find it, but it's there. So I'm going to click on that. I'm going to close that. Now I'm going to click on my chart and I'm going to move it over to where it says paste chart here. So move that over right there. Go ahead and do that and repeat this for questions two, three, four, and five. So assuming that you've finished all the questions, now it's time to go ahead and share the link with me. So you'll see this green button that says share. Once you click that, this window is going to pop up and it's going to say get link. You're going to click on copy link. And you're going to go over to Canvas and I'm going to show you how to paste this. Now that we're back in Canvas, I'm going to go ahead and go back to week three under targeting success using data. That link that you copied over, you're actually going to go ahead and hit submit assignment. You know, right click right here where it says website URL and hit paste. And just like that, um, as soon as you hit submit assignment, you are completely done.